Hi, welcome to Deep End. My name doesn't matter. Let's dive in. Today we're going to talk about Ambrose of Milan. Um, he was a uh, pastor, lawyer, politician, university professor in northern Italy uh, around 370, the 370 to 400 period. Um, he was born to a Christian governor's household. So the governor uh, of uh, a major portion of the Roman Empire was his dad. And he was a solid Christian. He was sent to Rome to be educated and prepared for a life in politics and public service. And as he uh, pursued that, he became more and more devout as a Christian. Uh, remember, at this time, all of Rome is considered Christian. It's the state religion. So everybody in Rome is, is just kind of assumed that you're either a Christian or you're uh, be going to say that you are one. So a lot of nominal Christianity is going along, and he becomes very devout while he's in Rome preparing for political service. And when he graduates and he becomes a lawyer in 365-ish, he is immediately catapulted as the into a position as governor of the town of Milan in Italy. And uh, he serves in the local church there, volunteers, loves the people, everybody loves him, and the bishop of that town dies, the bishop of that, really, that whole area dies in 374, and the whole area unanimously kind of grabs hold of Ambrose and says, we want you to be our bishop, and Ambrose says, okay, and he uh, becomes the bishop of Milan. He quickly sells everything he owns, he becomes a scholar and starts teaching in the university theology and rhetoric and very quickly catapults to fame as the greatest preacher in the Western church. So you had in the Eastern church, you had John of Chrysostom, who we'll talk about next time, but he's called the golden tongue preacher. In the West, you had this guy, Ambrose, who's this teacher of rhetoric. He's brilliant and he's a very hard worker. He gets really good at the things he focuses on and he teaches uh, rhetoric in the university and becomes the best preacher in the West. Now, some things about Ambrose's time. Their church and state was kind of one thing at the time, and the emperor was trying to rule over the church. So he was saying that the church had to obey what he said and what he did. Ambrose did not like this, and he did not like this reality, and he did not allow it to sit. So when the emperor orders the slaughter of 7,000 people in Thessalonica uh, in response to a political matter, Ambrose excommunicates the emperor and lets it be known publicly and tells everybody the emperor is not allowed in church, he's excommunicated. And the so profound and so powerful was his voice that when the emperor is exiled, it only takes about a year before the emperor uh, decides, I'm not going to fight with Ambrose I'm going to publicly repent, and he publicly repents and apologizes for what he did. That's some strong emperor. Could you imagine doing that today where a preacher in a town stands up and says, this, this public figure is not allowed in the church, and then uh, everybody submits to that, and everybody agrees to it, and he ends up making a public apology and repenting publicly for what he's done? Uh, that's pretty powerful. So Theodosius was the emperor he stood against. Another crazy story about Ambrose is he was he instituted hymns in his church. So you think worship wars were bad in the last 20 years. Uh, the No, Ambrose in, instituted hymns in his church, and when he started singing them, people rioted. Uh, the, the town had a riot, and the local magistrate uh, came and surrounded the cathedral or the, the church where Ambrose was teaching and where he was leading this worship service. And they surrounded him and he walks out on the front porch and says, uh, on the porch of the church and says, uh, we're about to begin service. If you would like to come in and join us, you're welcome. We're going to be singing some songs that everybody knows, some hymns, no more Gregorian chants in here. We're going to be singing some songs. You can come in and join us if you'd like. And he turns his back on the magistrate and walks into the church. And so the magistrate's left outside with his little army of men going, what, what do I do? What do I do? And he ends up 
some of them end up going in and joining the hymn singing and the others disperse and go away. So you think that worship war is bad now. Back in Ambrose's day, it caused a riot in the town. Um, so he, uh, he, Ambrose is one of these men in church history who's not so much known for his own writing so much as the influence he had on another great scholar. So Ambrose was the teacher of a young man named Augustine of Hippo. And Augustine is probably one of the greatest theologians in history. Uh, his writings have impacted the church uh, and theology since he, since, still even today. People read Augustine's works to understand who God is. So Ambrose was most noted because he was Augustine's mentor. Augustine, as he becomes a Christian goes to seek out Ambrose, who's an older man at the time, and and seeks out Ambrose to learn how to be a Christian and what it means to be a Christian and what it means to teach the Bible, what the Bible means. So uh, that's one of the powerful things that we see in Ambrose. We, we never fully know our impact until uh, we can look back in history and see it. And most of us will never see the influence we've had on younger people who have sat under us and have then gone on to do great things. I know that one of the great joys of my own life as a pastor has been the tiny glimpses I get to see of young men and young women who go on to serve the Lord after sitting under me for a time. And I have to be honest, uh, I have never predicted that correctly. Uh, Any time that I have said this person is going to be a great minister for the gospel, they go off and they do something completely different. And any time I've said, ah, oh, that person should never go into ministry, they end up being an incredible pastor. So um, I think much like Ambrose, we need to just do our best to teach the Bible where we are, to lead people genuinely and honestly, and to be godly as we do it. Uh, Ambrose was a lawyer, politician, turned bishop who loved people well and taught them the Bible, taught them the gospel, and taught them true worship. And when he taught them true worship, he engaged their entire soul. He, he sang songs that they knew. He worshiped with them. He wrote poetry and song, and he led his people in the growth of worship in Jesus Christ. So uh, that's Ambrose for you. I hope you're enjoying these I'm enjoying doing these. Uh, Take time to breathe today. And thanks for joining me deep in. Now go get to work.